Welcome back to another video. We're going to be talking about ProRes RAW being added finally after 10 years of asking for it to DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. Thanks for watching that. I want to give a special thanks to the person who supports me the most, Elizabeth, Libby. We took a walk around St. Augustine and enjoyed some wine and had some fun, but now it's time to get into what can we do with ProRes RAW in DaVinci Resolve, so let's take a look. Okay, I have my project open in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go into the settings so I can show you the color management. And for this project, we're going to use DaVinci YRGB as our color science. And our timeline color space is going to be ASUS CCT. And our output color space is going to be Rec709-A. So I have a bin here with uh, FX3 and Nikon Z8 footage. Um, and here is ProRes RAW from a Ninja recorder. And it is, it scrubs really easy, it plays back. This should be S-Log3. 
This is footage from uh, over at the park. And then here is some uh, footage from inside the house. That's me. Um, what you're seeing is a uh, Super 35 lens on a uh, full frame sensor. With ProRes RAW on the FX3, you can only record the whole sensor. You cannot use a Super 35 crop while you are recording RAW out the camera. With the Nikon Z8, on the other hand, I can actually, if I come down here, if you look in the top right, I actually have 5.4K Super 35 ProRes RAW because the Nikon can record that internally um, without uh, any cropping issues. So this is all 4.1K from uh, the our time at St. Augustine. And then I have concert footage from Disney Springs here, both 4.1K and 5.4K. So let's go into our timeline and we are in our string out. So this has all of our clips back to back. As you can see, I am scrubbing through it and it's very fluid. There's not any lag. It keeps up with my mouse. And if I hit play, it plays back just fine at 24 frames per second. Yeah. And this is actually 60 frames per second footage slowed down, uh, which is really nice. And then if I come down here, here's my Sony FX3 footage, plays back, scrub through, super easy, super quick, plays just fine. Now let's go into our color page. Okay. And we have our uh, Sony FX3 footage here. Let's take a look. Now in the camera raw tab in the bottom left, you can see that uh, we have decode quality options, so full res or half res. But if you actually bring it down to quarter res, it will play back on the FX3 just fine. Um, I had a problem earlier, and I can show you here. If I come over here to the Nikon footage, if I go from full res to half res, it plays. And if I go to quarter res, it does not work. So that's probably some limitation with the Nikon files. Um, the F if you're running an FX3 or uh, some other uh, cameras, you might want to test to see if your decode quality works perfectly um, with all the different options. Obviously, Nikon uh, wants to be a little special, um, as they seem to want to do lately. So um, I'm going to come to this cloud uh, clip. And you can see our waveform here. Um, it's very bunched together, mainly because it's looking at white. Um, but if I actually bring the ISO down to 100 or maybe even 50, um, and let's change our log curve, we can change our log curve to like Fuji log, uh, Blackmagic design kind of bunches it down or narrows it a little more. I can go to HLG, or I can even go to none, which none is, uh, uh, turns it into linear, doesn't really have a color space. It's the raw bare data from the sensor. And if I turn it back to 800, what I can do is I can bring in a color trans color space transform. I'm going to change my gamma from linear to, let's say, DaVinci Intermediate. So I could go straight from linear to DaVinci Intermediate instead of going from basically linear to S-Log3 to DaVinci Intermediate. It still gets you there the same way. It's math. Math is math. Um, so it's just a shortcut where you don't have to do three steps. You can do it in one step. Um, exposure bias allows me to move our exposure up and down by one stop. Color temperature allows me to go from 2500 all the way up to 10,000 10, or 9900. On uh, the Nikon footage, I was able to go from 2500 to 10,000. Um, so 
it might vary between different uh, manufacturers and how they've implemented ProRes RAW. So that's a quick look at what we can do with ProRes RAW inside DaVinci Resolve. Um, get out there, keep filming, uh, start using some ProRes RAW with your projects. And uh, now that we can use them in DaVinci Resolve, uh, it's gonna be a great time for everyone. <laughs> So if you like this video, hit that like button down below. And if you uh, feel like subscribing, I would really appreciate it. We're going to have many more videos to come and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.